Okay, here we are inside Revit, and I'm using um, Revit 2018. Um, so uh, this is my this is my floor plan. This is a house that uh, I put together for a client, and uh, it is you can see it is the entire house. Uh, so for this uh, lesson, we're going to focus on this master bathroom, uh, but the process would be the same if you were doing the kitchen or the powder or any other room that you wanted to to do. Um, so this is where we're going to focus. Uh, so as we are exporting our um, 3D model, we need to be in a 3D view. So I'm just going to, first of all, look, just go to a, uh, a basic, just a generic 3D view. And you can see here's the house. So you know, I've got this entire house modeled here in Revit. Um, so we could just export this as it is um, over to SketchUp and then delete out the stuff that we don't want. But actually that that can be somewhat tedious in SketchUp depending on how all the faces blend together and everything. So what we wanna do is create less work later. So we wanna do everything that we can do inside each software as we move through the process so that the subsequent steps are easier. So the easiest thing to do is to hide stuff uh, here in Revit. We don't want to delete anything because this is a real project and we need our construction documents and uh, you know we don't want to lose anything in this project. So uh, what we want to do is uh, just hide things. Um, but first what we're going to do is we're not going to use this basic view. We're going to set up a new view first. Um, so we are going to uh, set up a view just to see that master bathroom. It's over here in this behind this little window here. That's where that is. So the rest of the stuff we need to hide. So we're going to set up a new view. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is uh, we're here in our 3D view. So we'll go over here to um, our menu here and we're going to go to edit type. And uh, we've got this 3D view, so we're going to uh, duplicate that. And we're going to call that uh, export. Let's call that, yes, let's call that export. Okay. Okay. So now we are in, uh, it shows up here as export and a 3D. So that's what we're in. So I'm going to rename that actually so that I know what that is. And that is my, uh, this is going to be my master. Okay, so now I have a view set up just for my master bath. And so if I was also going to be doing the kitchen or any other room, I would want to do the same thing. That way I have that isolated. And if I needed to come back and make any changes at any point, um, I could easily get back to that same view and not have to go through this process again. And I'm also not changing any of my other views that I need for any other presentation documents or plans or anything uh, that I've got. So um, now we are in this view. I'm going to go ahead and um, change this style to uh, realistic so we can see all of the materials. Um, so I've got most of the materials um, added in here. I don't have everything because I don't really need it for this plan in um, Revit, uh, but I have, I have a lot of it, um, the, what I do need. Uh, so that's okay. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start isolating out this bathroom and we are going to do this uh, by um, selecting an item. We're going to right click it uh, and then we're going to hide it in view. And you've got some options here by element or by category. By element will just hide that one thing and then category will hide everything. This is going to matter with some things because uh, we're going to keep some elements that are in larger categories and if I were to hide the entire category then those things would go away too. So some things we want to make sure we know uh, what we're hiding. Um, so. Uh, for the roof, I know I don't want any roof, so I'm just going to hide that entire category and then they'll all just go away. All right, so all my roof is gone. And now I can see inside. And here's my master bathroom. And I, so I've got a ceiling in there. I am not importing the ceiling. 
with this project. There is no nothing special about this portion of the ceiling. I do have a portion here that's special, so I'll show you that. But the basic regular ceiling is just that, it's basic. So it's not getting imported. I'm gonna use the platform um, ceiling for that so that uh, it will calculate my lighting and everything for me properly. Again, that's another step to save you time down the road. Um, anything that you can do inside the platform and let it do for you, you should do that. So I'm just going to highlight uh, the ceiling. Did I get a ceiling? Yes. And I don't need any of these ceilings, so I'm going to also hide this category. And then that hides that entire ceiling. And now we can see all the way into that bathroom. way so we can see it better okay so in this bathroom uh, I have got it all laid out here and the elements that I want to keep are uh, my vanity my I'm gonna go ahead and take in these light fixtures um, as much as I can in one go uh, you have to remember you know the bigger the the more stuff the bigger the file so at some point you just have to kind of make a judgment call as what all can go in and what can't and also remember the more items you do at once the more the model compresses when it's in the platform so uh, the smaller details get difficult to see so just consider that um, uh, and then also if you have an interesting layout and you may have corners or things like that and some things that may be more difficult to get all lined up you might break those up as well uh, we're going to go ahead and take everything from this room you can also break that up in SketchUp uh, later but we're going to go ahead and take everything from this room except for the walls and the floor so I'm going to take my vanity my mirror my uh, shower walls uh, so these I built um, using curtain walls in Revit uh, to get that uh, those window pane look and uh, so I don't want to hide I need to get rid of all of the rest of the walls but I'm not going to hide the wall category because that would also hide these um, so uh, that's that is going to um, that would that would be a problem I want to keep and then I'm also going to keep this wall because I built um, a wall niche in there uh, a shampoo niche and uh, rather than take the time to build that again I'm gonna bring in just this one wall into the platform and uh, I will show you how to make adjustments for that and I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring in this wall as well because of this outside corner connection I want to make sure that connection is nice uh, when I bring it into the platform where it connects to this wall I can hide that because that's an inside corner I can hide the the platform wall and make that inside corner look good um, so I'm gonna bring in those two walls and then I am oh, sorry about that um, so I made a drop ceiling here over the bathtub with this um, with this barrel arch over the tub that matches the arch of the window that's there so um, that is something that I modeled so I'm gonna bring that in as a as part of this as well so to get going on hiding things we are going to zoom out and see the entire model like this so the easiest way to do this we could go in and click on all these things but that would take forever so what you want to do is just select all of that right click hide in view elements so the whole rest of the house, that's all hidden. It's all still there. You can always check it here with the reveal hidden elements and everything's, everything's still there. It's just hidden. So now uh, we're closer. Sometimes it's good if you want to just do like a straight top view, then uh, it helps. Um, so I'm just going to select all of this stuff and hide those elements. So this is that wall with a niche and this is the connecting wall those are the two i'm going to keep and then my elements inside the room i'm keeping um, but i'm not keeping the door so i'm just going to control select um, 
these elements all at once. Not keeping any of these walls, I'm going to build all of this in the platform. This is the closet. Uh, I'm going to build this in the platform as well. That's a little roof finial. Uh, so I'm going to right click and hide those elements. Um, and there's a window. I'm going to hide that. And these two doors. I'm going to hide those. Probably could have done door and window category as well, but um, just to be safe, I wanted to make sure. Okay, oh, so there's another window I need to hide. Hide that element. Okay, so this is all of my bathroom elements isolated into its own view called master bath. So I can always come back to this um, anytime if I have to make any changes. And I just saw something else. I think I've got some floor here. I'm going to go ahead and hide that as well. I'm not going to bring that in. All right. So I've got my bench and my shower fixture, vanities, uh, I've got a little light fixture under there. I don't know what that is in the model, that weird line. Uh, so I'll just delete that in, uh, in SketchUp. That's a lot easier. Um, and you can see my, my little barrel arch there. Okay, so that is everything isolated in my Revit model. So next, I am going to um, export this over to... Um, SketchUp. So now that I've got this all isolated, I'm going to just take a look at um, any of my materials or anything else that may need any adjustments. Um, I've got um, I've got materials uh, differentiated on all the different items. Um, some will come through when we export it, and some won't. So that's okay. Uh, everything's easily fixable in, in SketchUp. And, uh, but anything, you know, if you need to check on any of it in here, then um, yeah, you can do that. So, okay, now we are going to uh, export it to SketchUp. So we've got it um, all isolated, everything that we're going to do. Oh, hold on, I just saw something else. This wall, I'm not gonna bring that wall in. I'm going to hide that one as well. I'm only bringing in those two walls and my drop ceiling. So this is why you just kind of check things and this is also why you um, save your view on its own. That way if you do find anything you can easily come back to it. All right so I am going to export now. So we go to file and export and Revit will export uh, um, these, these formats here. And for SketchUp Shop, you can bring in the DWG or the DXF. Um, I have found the D DWG does uh, work better. Um, it, uh, it, it does seem to bring in better in this circumstance. So I'm gonna do that one. And then we get this dialog box and uh, everything um, here, just uh, this is our view and this is our 3D view. And we are going to go to next. And it's going to want to uh, save it here for you. Um, so it's gonna have some options here. For best purposes, save it way down. Um, just save it down to the lowest one that uh, it will allow you to do. When you're going cross-platform, even if it tells you it will take the newest version, um, I just always save it down to a lower version. Um, it just seems to make the process easier, and uh, it's uh, it just it's helpful sometimes. So I just always save it way down, um, and then. Uh, I've got, it, it automatically names it, so change it whatever, put it into whatever folder so you'll know where it is. And um, it's my, uh, this is my French country house, it's the master bath view. So, okay. All 
All right, so that has exported. It's now um, a DWG in a file on my computer. And from here, we're gonna move on over to SketchUp. And uh, we're using SketchUp Shop, so that will be online, and we're gonna head on over there. Okay, here we are over here in SketchUp Shop. And we've got our friend Helen. Um, I usually leave her there until I check the scale and make sure everything's come in easily or, or correctly. Um, it just makes it easy to, to see the scale. Um, and then we, we just delete her out or she will go to the platform too. Um, so uh, what we do over here in SketchUp Shop is we've got to upload the DWG that we just, that we just saved. Uh, so we're gonna go over here and we're going to go to insert and we're going to insert a file and you can see here it gives you the list of all of the files that it will allow you uh, to update I mean to upload so uh, we're doing the DWG and it's saved on my computer and I've got it here in my French country house and I have let's see where is it Here, uh, French Country House 3D View Master Bath. That was what we saved it as. And there it is. So we're going to open that up and we're going to insert that as a component. Okay, it's going to give you some options here. Uh, so uh, Preserve Drawing Origin, that uh, just um, keeps it in the same orientation and uh, place in the model where it was so that's fine either way uh, these are the two important things um, anytime any faces are overlapping that's going to cause some rendering problems so you definitely want it to just merge anything that's on top of each other and then we always have to have uh, the front face um, forward in on on all of our objects. There's a front and a back to all of the faces in SketchUp and the platform recognizes that as well. So you just want everything facing forward. So that will do that. And then we want our units um, in inches or whatever the units are that you are working in. If you're, um, uh, whatever your project is, uh, in, I'm, I work in inches, so I'm choosing inches. So here we go to import that. So it's gonna be uploading that model for you. And um, here in just a second, um, yeah, it's gonna give us this uh, pop-up. So it's converting that for us and we hit okay. And now it's gonna think about it for a minute again and it's gonna give you a little uh, pop-up here um, when that's ready to go. Okay, so now it's given us uh, this little pop-up and we're gonna go ahead and insert that into the model. If you miss the little green pop-up, it only stays up for a second, but you can always go to your menu over here and, and find that. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, if you miss the green pop-up here um, to load in your model, you can just go here to your, um, you go home and then here under import exports and then here's going to be your list um, and so then you would just click uh, this button to insert that um, into your model um, so let's see let me zoom out and I'm just going to click to place it I don't want to move it where did it go there it went way over there so I'm gonna move that over here to my origin and there's Helen and so what you want to do is check your scale and make sure that the scale came in properly so I'm going to use the uh, the measure tool here and I know my countertops are 36 uh, high so I'm just gonna drop that 
there. And uh, well, let's use let's use the dimension tool so we can see it a bit better. From there down. Well, it's not snapping to anything for me. But I can see that that is about three feet. So maybe if I'll do it to the back. So, see so you guys, sometimes the tools don't always even work perfectly <laughs> for everyone. It's just I can't get it to work. I want my measure tool, and I want to go from there down to there. Yes, three feet. Three feet. There. Oh my goodness. Okay, yes. So, I know that those are 36-inch countertops. Uh, so I know that the scale came in correctly. So I'm just going to uh, delete this stuff uh, so that I don't have any extra geometry or anything in there. And now I can get rid of Helen because I know that everything is correct. All right, so we have imported our um, model into SketchUp and we have checked for the accuracy. And so now we're going to prep the model for uh, for the platform. And that has to do with uh, our textures. So uh, we see everything came in as different colors. It did not bring in any of our textures from Revit. It only brought in everything as colors. So for something that's okay and some things that's not. Um, anything that has a pattern or a specific sizing, like a tile or a wallpaper or our countertops, we um, we need to fix that here in SketchUp first. Anything else that's gonna be basically a solid, we can leave a color and fix that in the platform. Uh, again, this is one of those things, you do whatever is going to be uh, the fastest and most efficient uh, way to do it. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to go through here and make a few changes before we're ready to upload. Um, so uh, the first thing I see is that these are my mirrors and this is gonna be all tile and they have come in as the same color. If I take that into the platform like that, everything, all those things will end up being the same. These will be tile or this will be mirror and we don't want that. So um, I'm just gonna, I'm going to get into my model here by double clicking and I'm just gonna change the mirrors to mirror so um, let's see let me get over here to glass and mirrors I'm gonna pick a, uh, a mirror and I'm going to double click into that and use my bucket and then double click into that and use my bucket and so now those are different and when I get in oh let me see the back of that is uh, we make that the mirror too, so that none of that comes in as tile. Okay, so uh, there we go. I've got all of that, and this is all going to be tile, um, and uh, so is my barrel arch and my um, my front here. So this wall will all be tile, so that comes straight across. So uh, rather than try to apply that finish to all of this green, here's something I can do. I can pick that up um, using my eyedropper, and then I can just make that green into, uh, I can edit that texture, and I can make that into um, my tile. And so I'm going to use that image. And it's going to ask me for the size. See, it's too small. That's not how I want it. I know that this image, the way these tiles worked out, it's um, they're a 30 by 30. And my image is not exact. It's 3 16ths off, but that's okay. Um, that's 30 by 30, and that's how I um, how I want those those tiles. That's the size that they should be. And that is important because when you upload this texture into the platform, it needs to be the same so that it reads this as the size you've put it in here. It reads that in the platform. And then it's gonna put that image that you put in the platform into that same size square. So if you were to add an image to a solid color, these solid colors are just pixels. So it's gonna put that image, this whole image into a little pixel. 
and uh, that doesn't work. That's why you have to make sure this mapping matches your image, matches what you do in the platform, and then it will all come out to be the right size. Um, so I'm also going to put this tile in, in, in my uh, barrel vault. So I'm going to use my bucket tool. Well, I've got to get in there. Use my bucket tool. And this is how I want that tile to run. So that's laying out nicely. I want it to, to wrap up like that. Orbit around. There we go. So I, that's how I want that to do. I want that to run along like that. And then it's also going to go on the front of, of that wall so that it comes across seamlessly with that. So let's see how that's looking. Okay. So this is not coming across. Uh, that's running okay. I don't know what that line is. Um, Let's see if we can, oh, no, that changed that. So let's not do that. All right. So when I am looking up close, I'm seeing this is not lined up exactly. So I'm going to fix that. Use my move tool and just snap that right to that edge right there. All right. And now I am seeing that this is not lining up but this is all I want all this tile to come straight across so it's that's not lining up properly so I am going to I'm gonna just I'm going to explode this and I have to explode it again Now that's letting me select that face. And now that should make one face across now, if I get rid of this line. There we go. And now that maps straight, that's all mapping straight across. And that's what I want that to do. So that's seamless when we get over the platform. All right. So next I'm going to do the same thing um, with my countertops, but I'm going to actually use a, oh, I'm gonna make sure I make sure you click done before you get out of that or else it won't save that texture that you just did. So I, that did that. So I'm actually going to go over here to, um, to stone and I'm going to use one of their stones rather than upload something. Uh, if you have a specific one then I, that you want to use, then you should use that. Uh, this is the quickest way to do it. And then I use a platform stone because they have really good ones. So I triple click that and then use my B and add all of that at once. And you can see how that puts it at the proper scale for a countertop for that pattern. So if you're using a specific finish or stone here, then you should do the same technique that we just did and add, um, you know, or just, you know, you need to upload your texture here, make sure it's the proper size of the, whatever your image should be and um, place that where it needs to be. Um, this is another way to do it, but um, I'm not using um, a specialty. It's just going to be a uh, like a Carrera marble. So um, they have those in the platform. So I'm just using those. Okay, so let's see. What else do we need to change? Um, okay, I can see. Let me get out of get out of that. Even though I had this as a different material than this in Revit, it still came through as all the same. So I don't know why I did that, but it did. So we're gonna get into here and this component, and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna pick up the color that came in on my faucet here because um, I want those to be the same. So uh, I'm going to get into that go back to bucket. Oop, I'm going to actually triple click that, go to bucket, and that'll change everything that's connected. And then I can change this in the platform because it's all one color um, and it's going to be a solid. So that's easy enough. Okay. Let's see what else. Oh, you know what? 
I've got this bench here that needs to be this tile as well. So I'm just going to double click in there, double click into my bench. I'm going to triple click to select that bench and I'm going to need my bucket tool and I'm going to pick up that tile. Even though you can't see it, it still should pick up that tile. And there we go. So now all of that is tile. Um, so let's check. I want this to be the same as this, but I'm thinking all of these different components in here are going to be pretty tedious to change. So I'm going to, uh, I'm probably going to just leave that one in here because it'll be a lot quicker to just select that and change and then select that and change in the platform rather than clicking into all these components to change them. So I'm probably just going to leave that and it's it's like a gray color so it'll be fine. It's a solid and uh, I'm not sure what this is but it may be the same color as that. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead let me see I'm pretty sure these are all components. So yeah, so when I select this one, it selects all of those light fixtures. So that makes that a lot easier. So I'm just going to get into this one and I'm going to select, drag to select this entire, um, the light, the shade there. And I'm going to make that into like a glass. So there we go. So that changed all of those. And all of the metals, the other things, uh, this is glass. Um, and because the glass is a solid, I don't have to worry about the pattern. Um, I'm just going to leave this all this yellow color. It's a, These are two different colors, so that'll work because this is going to be a metal and these are glass. And each of these are individual panes of glass. And I think probably on both sides, I would have to open up each of these to change. And I don't want to spend the time doing that. In the platform, I can just click this yellow color and everything will select at the same time. Everything will change over at once. It's a lot faster. So, um, all right. I think that's, that's all of my materials that I'm going, oh, let's check this light fixture under here and make sure. All right, it's, it's got its own individual colors on everything. I don't know what this line is, but I'm just gonna get get rid of this. I don't know what this is in here, but it needs to go. And it's got different colors on everything, so that's fine. It's different than everything else. I'll be able to change those over on the platform. And I got everything inside my shower. All right. That is, uh, that's looking all really good. Okay, great. Well, that is everything we need to do in SketchUp. So I'm going to save my project again, which you really should do in the beginning in case anything crashes. Um, okay, I was playing around with this before, so I'm just going to overwrite that one. So that's fine. And I'm going to, as soon as it's done saving, I will download it to my computer. If you are using uh, Pro, then you just save it. Um, obviously, you don't need to, to download it. Um, so, it's, okay, it's saved. And so now I'm going to go to download. I'm going to save it down to 2017. Um, even though the new documentation for the platform says it'll take these newer files, um, I've still been seeing glitches happening. So just save it down to 2017. Um, and then uh, you'll have a whole lot less likelihood of any glitching. Um, and there's my rivet bathroom. I'm going to save that. And that's it. It's downloaded to my computer. Um, just be sure you know where you're saving it uh, so that when you go to upload it, you can find it again. And uh, we're going to move on and upload this to the platform now. Okay, so here we are. I'm already inside the platform. Um, I went ahead and got logged in and I've already uh, 
gone ahead and drawn in the perimeter of my room. Um, so if you've got a more complicated plan and you wanted to upload your PDF or your DWG um, and do that, I just drew the walls in because I know my dimensions and it's a pretty simple, uh, not a very big room. Um, so I, I just drew it in. I just referred back to uh, my Revit file where I've got my dimensions here. Um, so 12, 17, 5, 6, 6. Um, and I've got 12, 5, 6, 6. So uh, 21 foot 6. I've got all, all of my dimensions there. And uh, I went ahead and dropped in my uh, my doors and windows um, that I've got uh, for this space, um, just to save time here, um, and uh, and and go ahead and get going into what we need to do to get that model in here. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do now that we've uh, got our floor plan laid out is uh, we're going to go ahead and upload that uh, that model. So we're going to go over here uh, to our, um, well, let me show you. Uh, you probably know this, but uh, you can go to your uploads here and click the model upload button. I always just keep a tab open here uh, so that it's just easier to get back to. Um, uh, these are my projects and in my personal library. Um, these are, you know, all my models. Um, this is one I would uploaded as a test earlier. I'm just going to delete that so that it doesn't get confusing. And I'm going to go to upload models and I'm going to upload it from my computer. And here is that file folder where I saved it. And here it is, my uh, Revit Bathroom SketchUp model. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to upload it. Um, so when you're uploading this, uh, you always have to choose its category. Um, I just, you can make it a kitchen or a bathroom. They have, you know, fittings and, and things like this. Um, because it's the whole room, I don't typically uh, use any of that. I just go to other. And we want this to sit and snap to the floor. So it's going to be a floor furniture. Even though it's got ceiling stuff and wall stuff, um, the overall model needs to snap to the floor. So it's going to go into the floor. And we just wait for that to process. Okay, so that processed. And now we're going to submit the model. And uh, I always go to check models. That way I can see what it's doing. It's not going to show up in your projects um, until it's finished uh, over here. It's not going to be in your library anyway. Um, so um, I always check here and make sure that that's done. And then now we can go back over here to our projects. Um, it may, uh, no, it's not going to show up here without um, a refresh. So I just, um, uh, hit F5 on the keyboard, um, and I'm on a PC, um, but that uh, will give you a refresh of your um, window. And let's see, it should be, yeah, there's our new one. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that in. orient this properly. Where are we? Here we go. All right, so there's the shower and this is that little drop ceiling and my um, countertops. I'm going to hold the control key so that it won't snap and I can get it exactly on there where I want it. Okay, I zoom way in and see. So it's not quite in there. All right. And then let's see this corner. Let's see. Let's go a little bit back that way. Just get that centered up. And we'll look again in, uh, in 3D. So, uh, okay. So first thing, here is those two walls that I, uh, that I brought in with, uh, with a model. 
So I, I have walls drawn in to define the space and to enclose the space for my project, but um, I do not want them to show. Uh, so there's those walls. Um, if they o overlap in any way, so like here, that's going to overlap and it's not going to show and it's not going to render properly. And the same thing here, uh, it, like it's filling in my niche and uh, um, so I don't want those walls there. So what I need to do is uh, go back to uh, the 2D plan and I actually probably have to move this out of the way for just a minute so I can see those walls. Um, what I'm going to do, I need to keep those walls because I, uh, like I said, you have to have an enclosed space um, and you have to have a floor plan. You have to have something built for it to save for you. You can't just import the room and uh, render it as is. You have to have something built and it has to be an enclosed. So I need these walls, but I don't need them to be, uh, I don't need the, them to be full walls. I want them to be a dwarf wall and I want to set them to height zero. Um, and now that I'm doing this, I'm seeing that when I did a refresh, it went back to the defaults of millimeters. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to my settings and I'm gonna turn that back to feet. And there we go. And so now I have a zero height. I have a zero height wall. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna make it a dwarf wall and I'm gonna set it to zero. And so anytime you're gonna import the walls um, of your project, that's what you wanna do. And even if you're bringing in all the walls, uh, just do that same process with, with all of the walls. Um, uh, I don't suggest bringing in your ceiling because uh, it then it won't read the room properly when you go to do your lighting. Uh, and also, like you see this little drop in ceiling here, I can't change that or move that. And anywhere that anywhere that um, that I move that, it covers it covers up. If I could get it to move, there we go. Anywhere that I'm going to move that, it's going to cover up. Why won't it move? I was holding the shift key instead of the control key. Hold the control key to move it where you want. See, it covers up anything that's underneath it. So if you have furniture or anything, when you bring in that ceiling, it's going to cover that up. Um, but I know my bathtub is already under there and I've already got that set. So in this case, that's okay. Um, if I need to bring that in and uh, I need to see under it, I would bring that in as its own model and then place it separately so that I could hide it and uh, be able to see under it. But for this purpose, it's fine. It's all part of it. All right, so I've got that placed. I'm gonna zoom back in and just line it up there where it needs to be lined up. You can see that little edge of the wall. I might pull that a little bit over just to cover that, to make sure we cover that. We'll look in 3D and see how that's looking um, because we also need this to line up with that wall there. So, all right, let's look in 3D and see how that's looking. So, there you can see there are my uh, tiled walls that I fixed in SketchUp. And there is my little uh, barrel arched ceiling. Um, don't worry about it not showing uh, anything that looks weird like this, like uh, see how that chandelier looks. That's just the way that uh, the platform will compress it. And the more elements you have, the more it's going to compress. Um, so, but I do see a problem here that uh, my ceiling height, uh, this bathroom should have a 10 foot ceiling and this is set to it. This, this barrel arch is set to a 10 foot. So what I need to do is change that in my 2D. Oh, it is 10 feet. Okay. So the reason that is not showing then is just compression. When you go into render, that will, that will be there. The rest of that will be there. So don't worry about and see like that faucet looks weird and everything just sometimes looks crazy in um, in the model view um, but it's just that's the the platform compressing things so that we can work quickly all right so it looks pretty good um, like it's in place so I'm just gonna go with it we may have to tweak it later but that's all right 
So uh, what we need to do is um, fix, our, fix our materials. Okay, now that I've got the model um, situated, I'm going to go in and update the materials. So this is super important, especially when you're bringing in an entire space like this. I mean, some of it's obvious because we left it as colors and this is supposed to be glass. Um, but uh, even if you were to leave some of this tile that we mapped, it uh, the platform doesn't recognize these different textures. So it just renders everything flat and shiny. So even if you had everything perfect in SketchUp, you need to update it here, which is why I say in SketchUp, do the little least amount of work that you can there um, and keep all of these things in groups as solid colors if you can, because then we have to change it over here. So we're gonna go over here to the material editor. Where's the, there it is and update uh, these materials. So uh, I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna start with my tile. So um, I have uh, already uploaded my uh, tile um, and I've called it my bathroom tile here. And um, so the process for this is not different than it is for any other project or any other um, item that you're working on. Um, you just want to make sure your mapping matches what you did in SketchUp. Um, so over here in SketchUp, I had um, the mapping at like uh, about 30 inches by 30 inches is what that tile came to. So when I uploaded it here, I set it to 30 inches by 30 inches. So that should come out just the same when I uh, reapply it here. So I'm just gonna do that. And it's, it's pretty close, it looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna leave that as it is for now. And uh, we'll check it in a test render and see how it's looking. So um, I'm, next I'm going to do my um, countertops, which uh, we mapped over in SketchUp also, but I'm going to use a, a public library material for this one um, because their materials are really good and uh, you don't have to worry about uploading and scaling and all of that. If they've got something over here that closely resembles what you want to uh, use, then I highly recommend you uh, you doing that. So um, let's see, I'm just going to choose, there's one in here, I don't know where it went. Um, I'm just going to choose one of these um, very uh, kind of clean lined marbles for this. Uh, so you can see how that added that and it looks to be it looks to be the right scale yeah that looks pretty good I'm gonna just go with that um, so next to move quickly I like to do things in groups when I'm in here so uh, I'll do all the glass in one go so that I can get over here into the library and um, not have to search around each time so if I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do all the glass I'm going to deselect that one so I make sure I don't accidentally change it and get over here into my glass menu and uh, so I've got my, my shower enclosure here, and um, we kept this all one solid color because the glass is not a pattern, it's a solid, so we don't have to worry about mapping. And also in SketchUp, if I were to change this, um, I would have to go in and change each of these individual panes of glass. And so that could be time consuming and I don't wanna spend any more time than I have to. I want this to go quickly. Um, so leaving it all one color, just a plain color like this without worrying about it. Now I can just select it and it all becomes uh, one glass uh, very quickly and easily. Um, so my other glass in the project is my light fixtures, um, my shades here. So I'm going to make those into a frosted glass. Um, if you look at uh, any sort of architectural photography um, in magazines or wherever, typically they do not turn on the lights on the interior. So um, we're not gonna turn all these lights on either. They're just gonna be a frosted glass. 
And my little chandelier here too is also going to be a frosted glass on that. Uh, so I think that's all of my glass uh, in here. So I, I have changed that. Um, and so next I'm going to move on to my metals. So let me deselect everything and I'm going to move over here to my metals. And uh, my glass flat, my, uh, my shower enclosure is going to be this, um, well, oh, you have to choose that first. And there, so that's going to be uh, that. And also my door handle is also going to be that same, that same black. Let's see. I have also got my, uh, my light fixtures here. Um, those are going to be this brushed, same as uh, my uh, faucets are also going to be this brushed. Okay, so I've also I've also got my shower fixture here, um, which is going to be the same brushed metal. And let's see, I think that's all of my all of my metals. Um, I do have hardware on this um, on my cabinetry. It's the same finish as um, my faucets, and it's so tiny. And due to the compression, they don't show up, but they'll be fine. They actually are linked to this, even though you can't see them. Uh, so actually, we just probably need to fix this um, hot pink bathtub. Nobody wants that. Um, I'm just going to make that an acrylic, a white acrylic, and so it'll just uh, just render um, nicely. Um, and let's see my mirrors. So I'm going to change those to a library mirror, just ordinary mirror. And let's see, now they are reflective. So uh, let's see, I think that's all my materials. I'm going to um, head back over to uh, regular DIY mode and make a few more updates. Um, so you can see it looks like my barrel vault is missing. Um, it's not. That's due to the compression, so uh, we're not going to worry about that. Um, but um, see, I accidentally almost moved that model. So now that it's finished, I'm just going to go ahead and lock it. That way I don't accidentally move it or do anything to it um, since it's ready to go. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, I want this tile to wrap on these two walls also. So I'm going to uh, just drag that over. I'm going to hold the control key so that I will just select that one wall. And because I checked all my mapping sizes, that's all going to uh, match up. And I'm going to uh, hold my control key and drag it over to that wall there too. So now we have um, this whole side of the room um, dressed in our tile. Um, let's see. Okay. So now I'm going to run a quick test render and see how things are looking. I've got a camera view already set for this room. Um, so let's see how that is going to look. Okay. All right, that's ready. All right, that's all um, looking pretty good. All of my uh, tile is there and uh, all of my materials are showing up. I see a couple of places where I need to make some adjustments. Um, this is not lining up properly here, so I'm gonna scoot that wall out a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna make sure this is tucked up against that wall how I want. So let's uh, go and just make some adjustments. Get out of rendering. I'm gonna go back to 2D. Let's see, so this needs to just maybe scooch a Oh, I locked it. So we're going to unlock it. I'm just going to scoot it one little bit that direction. And let's look at it in 3D and see how. 
All right, so everything is still on this side of the wall and it's tucked straight up. Okay, so the other issue that I was seeing was this here. That was not lining up properly right there. So I'm going to um, fix that in 2D over here. Yes, so that, let's see if it's, Yes, so we were too far into that wall, so I'm going to get a little bit just closer there and see if that brings us closer there. So that lines up better there, but that is still um, not quite right, so I'm just going to pull that up just a tiny bit. Let's go back to 3D. All right, that's lining up much better. All right, and we can do another test render and uh, check on that. Um, but for now, I'm going to just leave it like that. And um, actually, I need to add a material to those walls. So I'm just going to um, do that uh, quickly um, over here in the paints. Uh, I like this high reflective white. So I'm just going to use that one. And again, use my control click key to just select the walls that I want to, to change. And I'll put that on my ceiling as well. And this back wall so that everything reflects properly. Everything you do in your model changes the lighting and affects everything. So make sure you check all of those things. All right, so I think that's all of my materials. I'm happy with all of that. Um, so I'm just going to add some accessories and do a final render. Um, so I uh, have some um, accessories saved over here in my favorites that I want to use for this bathroom um, that I already put together an entourage collection. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and and place place that. I've got it saved as a group already. Um, and then I liked this mirror to go here on this little bit of wall. In there. And I think I think this door actually scoots down just a tiny bit. And now that I'm looking at these dimensions, I see that they've gone back to their defaults. So I'm just going to go over here to settings and change that back to feet. So you can see my all my door settings and everything there. Yeah, I think that goes over one more little bit there. All right, let's look at that in 3D. All right, that needs to come up. And this is an enterprise, so I need to update the uh, materials here so that it works properly. So you can see the accessories that I added um, from the the library. They're all just from the from the library. Um, some are enterprise, some are public. And I am going to go over and do another test render. My camera angle. And let's see how that's looking. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. So that overall is looking pretty good. Looks like I could um, fix this wall connection just a little bit better. 
Um, I might raise this up. A few other uh, little tweaks um, and maybe fix some lighting here because there's some weirdness going on with this. Um, but overall, um, I think it's looking pretty good. I might actually turn this light on and make this a luminous material um, because it's not really showing off very well. So I might actually fix that. So um, let's go back and make a few tweaks and then we will do another render. All right, I'm going to go in here to my material editor and I'm going to change I'm going to change this to a luminous material. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I like this one because it's a very clear color. It's not casting any light. It's not casting any colored light like these others are. So it's just, it won't change the effect of any of my um, other materials. Uh, so we'll turn that one on. Let's see, what else was I going to do? I was going to raise this up a little bit, a little more proportional to that door. Maybe it could pull a tiny bit this way too. There we go. And let's see, I'm going to, what else was I going to adjust? Uh, this wall, I was gonna pull that wall out just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. There we go. All right, let's go back over to the render window and I'm actually going to, I'm going to use the natural daylight and I'm going to change the uh, backdrop to the lawn. And I'm going to go into my uh, actually customized lighting in the natural daylight. And I'm going to see what could possibly be causing that weirdness on that glass. Um, I'm not seeing anything, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust the sun angle. So I would kind of like that sun to uh, come in one of these windows. So you can see here's the sun angle. So I'm going to, I'm just going to adjust that so that it can maybe come in, um, in that window and come across. So you can see here it's coming in like that and I can adjust that so that it gives it maybe a bit of a longer shadow um, and sunlight uh, coming in. So let's, uh, let's, let's see, maybe it's, I wonder if it's these that I might turn the brightness down on that one just a little bit and exit out of that. And let's do one more test render and see how it's looking. Okay, while I'm waiting for that test render, I am noticing that I did not add tile over here to this portion of this uh, shower wall. So that needs to be added. So I'm going to get out of this um, render window and I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do this over here and I'm going to I'm going to do this in construction mode so that I can see all the all the elements. Okay, so going over here to my advanced tools and my construction mode. So I'm doing this in construction mode rather than wall editor so that I can just line it up easily here um, rather than worrying about the measurements. I can just do it visually, um, which uh, sometimes can be a lot, a lot faster because I just want that to go right there. And then I'm going to go over here into my uploads and I've got my wall tile there and I'm going to put it there. Okay, uh, so let's just take a look at that. Yeah, so that's fine. So now that's on that wall. Okay, great. 
So now I'm going to go back to DIY. And there's my tile from my construction mode. I'm gonna go back to uh, the render. So that looks much better. <laughs> I was uh, not looking right without that tile there. And I'm gonna try one more render. I also made a few other just tweaks um, to my position of some of my entourage and uh, my lighting um, while I was waiting. So uh, I'm just gonna do another quick test render and see how that's looking. Okay, let's uh, check this, this last test render. Okay, there's my uh, new tile. Um, my lighting where I made some adjustments is, uh, is looking good. All right, while I was waiting for that uh, test render to run, I um, noticed a few other tweaks that I wanted to make. So I just went ahead and uh, did that to save time. I, I tweaked a little bit of the lighting and um, I actually decided to change this um, back wall tile here to break that up a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, just did, did a few more lighting tweaks um, to uh, see how this was gonna look. And and I uh, started another test render. So uh, let's see if that's done, and it is. And so here's here's how the uh, the final render is coming out. Um, you see, I I updated some lighting over here. I uh, fixed that reflection problem that was happening on the glass. Um, uh, I added this uh, light coming in through the window here and uh, so this is this is my this is my final render I'm going to upgrade the resolution to a 4k uh, now and um, that will conclude this uh, lesson on exporting Revit into the eDesign Tribe platform thanks so much